God's representation, which means speaking and acting on his behalf, in this day of the Lord is his righteous servant, the Isaiah 53. God's visible representation in the day of the Lord of Malachi 3 is God's righteous servant, who is the prophet like Moses, to deliver the new covenant of Jeremiah 31, which is basically how we know uh, that the time to come with Jeremiah 31 is the day of the Lord, because the only other place you see a mention of the arrival of the new covenant is with the angel of the covenant that you desire. The only other covenant is that of friendship when Moshe comes. God grants the covenant of friendship. The father like Moses to deliver the new covenant to the Jewish people as Moses delivered the first. It's important to point out that uh, it's not me. He, God said it's not like the covenant I made with the fathers out of Egypt. That's true. It's an amendment. It's a, uh, there's an addition to it and a confirmation of the first covenant. Yeah. Nothing ever happened to the first covenant. It's not terminated by the new covenant by any stretch. But there's an amendment and you find it in Malachi. Verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 22. Be mindful of the laws I gave Moses at Oreb of my rules, commandments. <clears throat> um, it's being mindful because it was strict compliance at Oreb, Sinai, and it had to be 100% of the people. Well, God makes it clear. He realizes that's no longer the case. He understands that that's why there's a scroll of remembrance for those who revere and esteem his name and those who do not. He's recognizing that fact, even though when he um, speaks of the new covenant in Jeremiah 31, he says, and all will heed me, and Torah will be written on your heart. How's he going to do this? He tells you, because I'm going to... Forgive your sins and remember your iniquities no more. Okay, he's making a new covenant. He's delivering. He's saying this is what it's going to be. But he knows as well as we know. Just because you forgive somebody a sin isn't going to, isn't going to necessarily get them back to synagogue, studying Torah day and night, and... Um, becoming one who doesn't have to uh, ask other people's questions, but it will for a great majority of people. And he knew that. And he makes it clear in Malachi 3, which is the last page of the last of the prophets. He shot calling to his prophets, the Hebrew Bible uh, closes up. So, that, that's what that all means. As far as everybody has to, it becomes, be mindful. Now, each uh, uh, sect, I guess it is, of Judaism, Orthodox, Orthodox, Conservative, uh, Reform or Reconstructionist, uh, they're all going to have to decide what that means for them. Every, as you can imagine, everybody's going to come up with something different. What being mindful is, but as Elijah, and I am the righteous servant. And I'll get to this, I actually handled the, the task of Elijah, David, and the prophet like Moses. Uh, I've already pretty much handled the prophet like Moses. I've, I've, I've written two books as Moses wrote the Torah. God told me what to write down, commanded and directed. Fast great dictation, I get real involved in it. He, he makes me feel like a writer. But, uh, but every word is it. It's, it's, uh, it's divinely received. So it's scripture, it's, it's not canonized, but it is new, and it straightens out a lot of things that Judaism has done wrong. They just flat got it wrong, and, and he knew they would. There's a lot of cranky writing in there. 53 is a great example. The reason I'm cursed with disease, 
that I will offer myself for guilt and receive a long life. The person with disease has got one purpose. He knew the Gentiles were going to come up with an unblemished lamb of God. And then they did it against the sins of you. It's a story, but he knew they'd come to it, and they would ignore those words. They would ignore they They, they interpreted it to me he was, he, he was brought to sickness was brought into grief. But the problem with that is, in verse 12, he's exposed to death. So whatever this sickness is, whatever this sickness is, he exposes him to death and takes him to the grave. In my case, that was cancer. So they can tiptoe around it all they want. But, uh, but I had to go through the cancer just because of that, because it, Ezekiel is your go-by for 53. The spirit sees me, and I went in the bitterness and fury of my spirit, he says, in the hand of God. Now, I'm going to get you back. That's, um, <laughs> that's not getting you, going to, that's going to God's boot camp. And uh, he doesn't have any, he doesn't bother him one back uh, to wound you, to hurt you mildly. To, to basically, when I say to you, I, I call it torment. Sometimes it can be so bad, but it has changed me. Now, it took 13 years, but I'm not the same person he started with by any stretch of the imagination. It takes the fury from you. You know, Moses was like that. Uh, he got so uh, furious, he killed a man. Zeke was like that. I was like that. And that's, we call it his fire refinement. And, uh, I'll have a lot more on that as I go. Okay, the distinction of the righteous servant begins in three verses combined by quotes, which I don't see that anybody else has in the uh, renditions of their translation from Hebrew uh, to English. Uh, Shabbat, uh, Soviet singer, uh, Jew for Judaism. I, I just don't, I don't see it. And it makes a difference. Three verses combined by quotes at the end of chapter 52, which of course leads into 53, where God is the speaker. And then it becomes the witnesses in verse 1 of chapter 53, speaking in the first six verses, also combined in quotes. Okay, that's important because as soon as you read the story, the righteous servant is as lowly as these people are. For the most part, that's what, that's what you gather. He was born from area of land, this and that, but rises to a great tree crown, okay? He starts low, okay? Then he goes back and helps them because they're in the same place. What is it? They're unrighteous. They're sick. They're not observant Jews. They feel badly before God. They, they don't live their lives correctly. They've got all kinds of problems in the family. They've got uh, problems at work. All kinds of things simply because they don't obey God's laws that he says you really need to get through this harsh world. And, you know, he says it's nothing to me whether you, whether you abide by them or not. It's for you. You know, if you don't want to be a servant, I'm not going to pay any attention to you. That's just the way he is. Okay, here's the witnesses. This is the witness is, and they are the many made righteous. Remember, this man, he goes through all these things. He is, they're going to tell you, he, he was wounded. He, he was, uh, uh, he, uh, well, let me read it. Let me read what they have. But he ends up making the many righteous, and that would include all these people. All these people who are sick from unrighteousness. And uh, and then a multitude of people. Start that for up. The second of Tuesday. Okay, the witnesses who are Jews identify themselves as ones of the many made righteous by God's righteous servant, saying, It was our sickness that he was bearing, our suffering he endured. That's verse 4. 
He was wounded because of our sins, cursed because of our iniquities. Verse 5. He bore the chastisement that made us whole, and by his bruises we were healed. Verse 5. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of us all. Verse 6. And see, offering for guilt. Verse 10. That's what the offering for guilt is all about. That's what, that's, that's what, that's what you tell that I'll, I'll go remove their guilt by being the teacher of righteousness and makes them any righteous. I'll make them righteous, their guilt is gone. And then what about all these words? Wounded, cast out, sickness he took, this and that. That's God's food camp. <laughs> that's where he, he, uh, yeah, it's sleep deprivation, mild sleep. I mean, the, the stories are endless over 13 years because he's been relentless. And he does not sleep, which means I don't sleep much. And, uh, you know, most of the time I can't understand why he's still doing it. I feel like I'm prepared and I'm ready. Uh, the last two years have been the most terrible, brutal uh, of the 13. Every year it just escalated more and more. And his response to that is, it takes more to get out of you what I want. These emotions, all these different emotions. You see, the more I draw them out, the more I mouthfeed you, the more I make you angry, the more you change, whether you can see it or not. In the short term, I couldn't. I couldn't see anything changing in the first three or four years. But it started to. And today, I can look back, and he can take me back, so... Uh, even put pictures in my mind and, and, and make me feel as I, I felt in the beginning. And uh, I see a great difference, a great difference. Okay, now, what I'm looking for here on my phone is from the books. So, you know, I'm kind of giving you uh, just the vernacular on it from my standpoint. And, but I make sure I read what he wrote because it's a, it's a lot clearer. Uh, it makes more sense. But this is why I'm getting all this. He said, God gave it to me. He, he taught me the Bible. He had me read it. We, we would go out on long walks. I had visions. And um, and then we, we finally, after about five years, got to writing a blog. And uh, all the blogs became the chapter. The book of Ezekiel is the key to understanding Isaiah 53. In the book of Ezekiel, God sees him and made him suitable for the purpose of being a prophet to the Assyria, Babylon exiles, in God's final assignment. This is from Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. But the house of Israel will refuse to listen to you, for they refuse to listen to me. For the whole house of Israel are brazen of forehead and stubborn of heart, then I will make your face as hard as theirs, and your forehead as brazen as theirs. I will make your forehead like enemy, harder than flint. Do not fear them, and do not be dismayed by them, though they are a rebellious group. How's he going to do that? How does he going to make his forehead like an enemy? So he's got, he's got to calm his emotions, but they make him tough as a boot at the same time. Ezekiel says, A spirit sees me and carried me away. I went in bitterness and the fury of my spirit, while the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. That's just what I ever found. He's bitter and serious at God. He says he's hurt me. He's hurting his feelings, he's hurting his emotions, he's hurting his physical. He pulls him to the ground with his, with his hands bound behind in his back like he had handcuffs on. He has to lay on one side all day long and all night long. For 390 days. If you think it didn't happen, I beg the difference. I, I, I tell God that's it. And he had 40 more days for the sin and the punishment of the house of Judah, he said. And that wasn't vicarious 
several years. It just corresponded to it. Basically, he was a, he was a preaching man. It would have infuriated him that he was taking the punishment for the house of Israel and Judah. He didn't know like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been trying to get them to sub the whole life. Just infuriated Okay, little bitty times, uh, chastisement. He goes, he goes, Lord. Uh, and he says, oh, Lord, I have not eaten the flesh of a dead animal uh, since my youth. And God's response to him is, what? I give you cow dung instead of serious treatment, my treatment and chastisement. You know, that, 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 that took like one minute of a day. I mean, he didn't keep it going for weeks, days, weeks, and months. But uh, that's, that's what that is with Ezekiel. It's 53. Ezekiel told he would bear the punishment for sin of the houses of Israel and Judah, and he has punished, chastised, maltreated, bruised, and crushed to make him suitable to be a prophet to the exiles and speak the words of God he is given during the ordeal and the anguish of it. Out of his anguish, that's part of Isaiah 53 too. You know, Jesus didn't come out of any anguish, he died. But that's in there. Uh, out of his anguish, uh, he will have devotion to I can't remember exactly, but anyway, I think it's verse 11, out of his anguish. And that's what it's all about. And why did God write it like that? The same reason, the same reason Jesus and preachers are making it in the head. He just knew they would today in the day of the Lord. Because he knew the people were going to think what he would. And that, what you can understand, they didn't, they didn't go to an age of science, an age of medicine, an age of reason. They didn't go to school. They couldn't read the masses, the great majority of all people. You know, they're like children who lived on emotion, who weren't very bright. They might have been brighter than the heirs, but yeah. And it was a tough time to live, so there's a lot of, lot of story in God's book, because that's all in people who live. Tell me a story. Tell me a story. Tell me a story. That's where all this stuff comes from. And, and, but you know, once, once you become enlightened, when you have reason, and you're in church, and you're a soul man, you got to start asking yourself, oh, wait a minute, how is nation going to love nation? How, how are you going to get this world to suddenly out of nowhere? Two billion Christians, two billion Muslims say the Jews have been right about God all along, how stupid we are. It can't happen. It's too bad. He can say that stuff in that video, and it's like, that's great stuff. I hope that happens. It can't. It's not possible. You have to go to shit with you to think it's going to happen. And thinking that did what? It left out utter destruction to the land. And Judaism's teaching for the arrival of Messiah, which of course is when the day of the Lord is. Because the Lord appoints him to be the shepherd amongst the flock and dismisses the rest of the shepherds. That's all the rabbis of the Lord. They've all been dismissed because I am paid. I have been appointed. But my appointment is not, this is a big dynasty of kinship and kingdom. No, no. I'm a shepherd. I'm a teacher. I'm not a rabbi. I'm not uh, ordained or anything like that. But I am a teacher. And I think that word means teacher. But, uh, no, it's it. It's what I'm doing. They're all this mess. Of course, you'll still be going to see me die. I'll be missing that. See, that phrase, they should no longer tend to flock after God has his reckoning and his message then from tending the flock. That work in antiquity. Again, you got to know how to read this thing. It, it, it's, it, it's a key part. There's antiquity in the Middle Ages. There's the age of the, the common era. Age of enlightenment. Science. Medicine. Uh, you know, we know you can't resurrect a body from the dust of bones. <laughs> These religious people in Judaism want, you know, I know what they do, they do what the Christians do. It's not safe, I believe. In other words, if you say different, 
一说我爱的事，那原来一说我们吃不起，一说一一说一定要得吃啥子，还不可说不讲得吃，要弄那个就开玩笑说一句。因因因因，现在人家可以一些有才的，不能可以的，就是那个外在。When they say that for all of the world will be for nothing but to know God, God will need them like that. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't like it. Um, that's the only story around. I got the videos of him. He made all this stuff that that would be his perfect world. There's none of it in the Bible. None of it's supported by God's covenant of friendship. He tells you concrete. This is what's going to happen when I come. I'm going to grant you this covenant friendship. At a point, David is sick. When David is sick, so when Moses comes, when Moses comes, when Moses comes, when the covenant friendship comes, and it's got all of it you possibly want to drink. Bottom line, you're never defeated as first again. And what he's saying is, if you don't listen to my father, if he doesn't clear the way for me to return to my temple, which means get it built, and of course I can't do that on my own. I gotta have followers, which is really the reason he's a man named God. People who believe me. I don't expect it to be a lot of people. I don't know what many in a multitude is, but I'm not there. We'll see. We'll see. But, uh, This having a man in divine being, see, that they didn't even doesn't understand that because they don't understand the Holy Spirit is the person, which is absolutely absurd too. Because he is, he says he gets greed. Can't you can't greed in an animate object or element? Uh, he goes to Ezekiel. He says Ezekiel, see, so he can talk, and then uh, to make a show of it, God Ezekiel then verse and God leaves. Ascends and then descends on a hill east of Jerusalem, which means the Holy Spirit. And then it says the Spirit of God, who would have been left there, took Ezekiel on a vision. He's got to be a person, and he is. Those are the divine beings. Those two are always together. The Holy Spirit is the angel of God's presence. And of course, what God's Spirit is, God is just like what I am, my Spirit is. You know, uh, he's an angel, and his body is not human form with wings. His body is the spirit of God. So he's only spirit and an angel. Um, but that's the name of the divine being. So when you read Isaiah 11, the spirit of God lies upon him, you don't know that that includes God. Because he doesn't say it. But God is in his spirit. Now, this scripture on that, I'll leave that to some other videos. That make it clear God is in his spirit. <coughs> and he doesn't tell you why. This is my proof. This is how you say, you know, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe we had so many things wrong. But all of this makes perfect sense. And how does this man, who's an atheist for 50 years, a Gentile, who taxes of all places, know all these things? and see all this that no Jew has ever seen before. Did I just suddenly become the greatest sage and rabbi in the history of Judaism for the Jewish people? No people. I didn't. <laughs> It's because God taught me. And now I wrote these books. And, you know, we're still trying to tell them, you know, I have to have a human experience. You know, there's not a lot of perks in my job, believe it or not. <laughs> I, I have to, you know, they, I, I, I still forget things, don't have me forget them. But they have total control of my mind. They know when I have forgotten something, you could tell me. Uh, you know, every so often I'll make some mistakes in my typing, and they'll leave it in there because it embarrasses me. Continuing to change me, draw some emotion from me. But it won't ever be anything that, that That, that hurts his cause. I can promise you that. Okay, so back to Ezekiel. Just like the righteous servant, it said he's not crushed with disease and does not make himself an offering for guilt. And I told you what that was for. It was that was kind of aimed at the Gentiles and uh, Christianity. 
The description of the righteous servant starts in 52. At the end of it, should be warned, God passes his wrath from the Jewish people to those who told him to get down on the ground and walked all over them. There would be those that group of Gentiles specifically that took your book and said, you don't know how to read it. It's prophetic of Jesus. But Gentiles in general, the, the, because the world has done that one way or another, but I think it's specific. So his wrath is on Christianity right now. And, and, I, I am the biggest arrow in the quiver. Because Isaiah 53 is a Gentile. God comes from Adam and other peoples, other Jews, none are with him. And Adam uh, is associated with Esau. Uh, and all his descendants were Gentiles. He married nothing but Gentile women, the Edomites. Uh, and Adam was in Jordan, uh, and that's Gentile land too. So basically, I'm coming from a Gentile country, a Christian country, and I'm coming with a Gentile. There's no Jews with me. And nobody's known that. And, you know, how could a man totally fit the description of the Lord's righteous servant in Isaiah 52? 14, 13, uh, I'm just looking for the descriptive parts. This is where it all starts for 53. With his appearance marred, unlike that of man, that would be normal man. And just so marred, he shall startle many nations. In verse 52 to 15, it is a word. First of all, marred means to deceive. Or disfigured. That's what Mars means. Unlike that of other men. God says, I touched you in the womb. And took my right breast from me and withered my right arm. And I had to have some surgery up here so I could move it correctly. But it works good. It works. It works just as good as the leg. It just doesn't have any strength. But it's fast. Um, I mean, I throw a baseball with it. But he did. He defeated me after a bit. So it started, but he never spoke to me. They came to me just like Jeremiah. They came to me at birth. And uh, I think Jeremiah says in the womb, but, but anyway, uh, because they have my whole life. They show it to me in vision. They don't have all of your life. They know who you are just like looking at you. And they have a knowledge, an absolute knowledge that's beyond anything we can comprehend. But, I mean, they literally can send back the ambulance of any event in my life. My first kiss, driving my first car, uh, and, and just uh, the different places I've lived. You know, it always feels kind of different when you live in other places. It's, it's truly amazing, but they, they, they had to show me that we did these things. We orchestrated these things. And, um, but he did the same to me. I was 50 years old. But he just said to me in the womb for that verse, right there, just for that. I've never let it bother me personally. Oh, he said one of the reasons was I wanted people to pick on me as they pick on young Jewish boys just for being Jewish. You get picked on just for being deceived. Just because you believe something can pull you because you got a bad arm. Well, I told him, I said, well, what it really did is made me one hell of a fire. <laughs> it made me mad. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, like I said, it's fast. <laughs> I still hit you, baby. But, you know, I hadn't been able to fight since I got out of high school. And never could now. Of course, I never would want to. I live with God. And He lives within me and without me. And I've gone through all that. They're like two clouds. They come together. That's how God is in His Spirit. Well, it surely is in God, too. The elements of God's mind, that's His presence. You know, my presence is where I'm at with my mind. And then the elements of Spirit. Okay? They, they're like, it's hard, they fill any room I'm in. Uh, but they flow through me. That's the difference. I'm messed in there with Him. Whereas, if you're in the room with me, they would just surround you. They flow through me. And so there's this power, and there's a heaviness to it. I always see when it's not just. Huh?
Picking back up, if I were to be sitting with all of my injuries from accidents and surgical operations at one time, before healing, together with my congenital disfigurement, my appearance and features would be marred from that of a man and people. There's a long history in the book on my life. Uh, Beginning with my first surgery, to impaling my right knee on a Coke bottle, almost losing my leg. Uh, there's a lot of story on that. To uh, being shot through the abdomen uh, when I was about 18, I think it was. Uh, and almost dying from that. Uh, so got a lot of scars. And in total, we, I've counted up about 15 surgical scars. And about five of those come from the gunshot wound. In this accident, it seemed like I was in the hospital for a few years, it stiff, stiff, somewhere. But um, with my teeth not there, my telephone was taken. And so here's what, here's what, uh, so that is how, everything I just said, is how a man can fit the description of the Lord's righteous servant in Isaiah 52, 14, and just so, he shall startle many nations, king shall be silenced between him. Okay, I went through all that. I'm marred. I'm disfigured. Uh, but I'm still alive. Now, you, you take care of your sin of putting the people of Israel as the righteous servant of God in Isaiah 63. All he, everybody in his story dies. I don't know how they startle anybody. Much less make the many righteous and a multitude. I, I don't know. You know. And I get on these things, you can do even worse. The whole thing is based on something that's never going to happen. Uh, the Messianic era, it's, 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 a, it's a farce. I really, really sometimes wonder if they don't really know that. Especially Toby is saying, he's very intelligent. He's got information from here to there. But his reasoning capabilities on Isaiah 53 10, because that's all I really got, is that it is. It's scary, it's so bad. It's scary bad. He went to Leviticus like the Christians did to Jesus and started applying human beings to an animal worshiping a atonement system that God did away with in the times of the Bible. Nobody gets online. Nobody makes anybody righteous. To think he doesn't really know, but then that would say he's a liar. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying... That's the worst case of reasoning capabilities I've ever seen by an intelligent, capable man. That's what I'm saying. But he needs to be. This is the day of the Lord. There's a new teaching here. He wasn't supposed to know everything I know. He was intentionally hidden from him in many ways. For instance, the Holy Spirit and the angel of, the, of his presence appears one time. And it's in the book of Ezekiel. God couldn't put that in the Torah. He couldn't have made it clear. He was clear. Now in the Torah, he says, I send my angel before you. Do not disobey him. He will not forgive.